Why love superficially when we can go from hello to epitome, manifesting destinies and shit. Hello Capricorn and welcome to your August mid-month reading. I'm Princess India. If you didn't know that, pleasure to meet you. But uh, these are going to be kind of short this month because I have you guys September love readings coming up soon, y'all know. So this is a quick just little check-in general read. The intention that I set for all signs was that... Um, <clears throat> Whatever was most important to each sign, that that be what comes up. So uh, for each sign, it's different, you know. Everybody has a little something different. Because, you know, it depends. Okay, let's see. That was falling out. Seven of Wands. <clears throat> Stand your ground. Stand up for what you believe in, Capricorn, you know. But anyway, for each group, it has been something different. So... Whatever is important to you guys, it shall come up. So I'm just going to do a general little spread. I'm going to shuffle a couple of more times and we're going to hop into this piece because I'm not going to take too much of your time, Capricorn. I know you got Capricorn things to do and whatnot or whatever, you know. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this deck because my cards are sticking. All right. Central energy challenge, what's behind you, Ooh. what's before you, what's above you, and what is below you. And then at the end, we're going to pull a spiritual guidance card for you guys. So central energy for Capricorns is the justice card. This is challenged by the queen of pentacles. Some of you guys might be going to court with um, a uh, Capricorn Taurus or Virgo. Or this could be you. Uh, I sense a little bit of a little karma stuff going on there. But we're going to keep going and see what else. Okay. So we have the Four of Swords as what is behind you. So you guys are coming out of a time where you've been resting, recuperating, and getting your life together and things, you know. What is below you is the Queen of Swords. Mm, interesting. What is above you is the Page of Cups. <laughs> And what is in front of you is the Ace of Pentacles. Okay, so with the whole court deal, uh, I feel like some of you guys may be getting a little settlement or something. So, uh, man, and I feel like this is y'all judge on some stuff. Um, okay, so uh, this is a small number of people, but some of you guys uh, may be dealing with, I don't know if it's like a lawsuit or something like that or inheritance or something, I don't know. But it's something court related. It's something court related with money that you're fighting for, or money that you're trying to get or waiting to get or something of the sort. And for those of you who are kind of worried um, about like the judge, because the judge might be, I ain't gonna say might be, homegirl look like she mean. She look like a Judge Judy, but I'm gonna tell you something about her. She's not a mean person at all. She's very, very sweet. Because if we look at the Queen of Swords, she has a sweet little butterfly on the tip of her sword. And that takes a lot of precision and balance to, you know, balance a butterfly on the tip of your Sharpie sword, right? So <laughs> I'm literally seeing these people as the same person. So it's like, it, it's understandable to be fearful of her, but I feel she's a really great judge of character. So I do feel like things are going to work out in your favor for those of you doing the court thing. Um, and you're gonna get your shmoney, you know? Your shmoney is coming, you know? And uh, I feel like you guys have been worried about this too with the uh, Four of Swords. So I feel like that's why you guys kind of took that step back to kind of retreat and things. Um, it's because of worry that this may not go in your favor, but I do see that it is, right? But that's just for a small number of people. For others, um, this is you guys kind of stepping into the space. It's um, more or less you guys showing up, like from you guys taking this little step back, I feel like you got hella clear <laughs> on a lot of stuff in your life that was not quite right or people in your life that were not quite right. Like people who, I'm just going to say it, people who are coming at you kind of half ass. You know what I'm saying? They were giving you things that weren't really worth your time, effort, or energy, right? <clears throat> I do feel like in a mental analytical action-oriented sense, I do feel like 
um, you guys kind of have that on lock as far as like, okay, if you were going to like get your life together, you guys would strategically understand like, I'm going to get a therapist, I'll get a life coach, you know, or a financial coach and learn how to manage my finances. You know, I'm going to pay down my debt, you know, whatever. So in a strategic sense, I feel like you guys have that on lock, right? But I feel like the thing that you need or, and this isn't me saying that you need it, but this is something I feel like you guys are aware of is the fact that you, you're not showing up, like you're emotionally unavailable. That's the quickest way for me to say it. It's like you are aware of the fact that you you are emotionally unavailable in the sense that you just have a lot going on right now, right? So I think this kind of like retreat, so this may be like, you know, <clears throat> the Mercury retrograde shutdown that a lot of people have done, myself included, of just kind of taking a step step back and needing to just kind of clear your energy so you can really see yourself, see your life, see what's going on. You know what I mean? <clears throat> And now with you guys being clear on yourselves and who's around you and how to positively move forward, it's an understanding because I feel like you guys are like at that place of just like um, self-understanding, but that self-understanding is what revealed the fact that why you are emotionally unavailable. So why you may not be dating or why dating relationships haven't worked out is because you're not really ready to open up to people like that so the challenge then becomes you stepping into the queen of pentacles energy which is very much your energy because you are an earth sign and you focusing on yourself so now you're kind of coming back into life reintroducing yourself to life after being in this uh you know pseudo hermit stage like kind of being isolated from everyone or whatever and now it's you coming back like undergirded by these energies. Like you're not taking no shiznit from nobody. Like you're very clear. You're very direct. If people are not adding to you, they're taking away and you're feeling fair. Oh, I cannot talk. I really just like my mouth is just like shutting down here, people. Yeah. I was trying to say like four words <laughs> at once just now. But anyway, so you're clear that when people are not adding to you, <laughs> try this again they are taking away from you right so you're weighing your options with people you're seeing people for who and what they are and if they're taking away like you're just cutting them out because it is absolutely necessary and i mean i'm stressing necessary because that's how i'm feeling capricorns are feeling it's absolutely necessary that you don't have any more half-ass people in your life at this point like you are so over the half-assness you are clear that the half-assness is what put you in the little proverbial casket in the first place. It's what broke your heart, you know? But then you realize that you were getting a little half-assness and you could potentially give a little half-assness and you don't want to give people half-assness so you're just going to continue to focus on yourself. Get your stuff together before you start dealing with other people. Beautiful thing about this is this is going to get you what you want. You guys are going to start building the life. You have the seed for the life. And I used this analogy with someone else earlier. can't remember what sign it was. Um, but um, I was saying how... Oh, it was cancer. I was saying how a lot of times when spirit gives us things, especially when we see like ace cards, it's like getting an acorn. And within that acorn is an oak tree. A lot of times we want the full-on oak tree, Right. But within that seed exists an oak tree. It just needs time and nurturing. And I was joking with cancer. And I said uh, that all cups cards are filled with cancer tears. I thought that was hilarious personally. I don't know how the cancers feel about it. We'll have to see in the comments. But anyway, shout out to you if you have cancer in your chart. But anyway, um, that's how I look at um, pentacles. I really can't talk. That's how I look at pentacles cards not pentacles cards that's how i look at all aces Jeez, louise i need to get my life together i need to get my life together with you capricorn capricorn i can't even say capricorn i'm just i would stop talking but i don't think i'm gonna be able to finish this reading if i don't talk i just hold up cards and i don't know subtitles i don't know anyway but yeah so um i say the same thing for you that i said to cancer which was that you know what it is that you're given 
it may not be in the state that you expected it, but it's going to require some time, energy, effort, and nurturing. But I feel like you guys are equipped to do so. And I feel like this time, effort, energy, and nurturing for a great deal of you is going to go into yourself. For those of you with the court case that I said in the beginning, um, this is going to be what you invest this money into. You're going to be investing this money into something that is going to grow over time. So if that's like a business or, you know, what have you, um, it's something where you're going to plant the seed and nurture it over time. And it's going to grow into your 10 of pentacles, right? So that's super dope. You guys are in a, uh, a really good place. So just don't be deterred. If you get a seed, just be aware that, uh, Within said seed lies an oak tree, Capricorn. So the oracle card you guys have is, oh, this is the same one that Taurus got, self-sabotage. When you learn to get out of your own way, there will be no stopping you. Most of the time, it's not others who prevent you from achieving your true goals. It's the inner voice that derails those carefully woven plans. Absolutely, freaking Luli, Capricorn. We got this card too for Taurus. And that truth that kind of came out uh, with this whole uh, half-assness that we were talking about, that's what I feel like this self-sabotage is referring to. But like I said, you guys, that was made clear to you guys. For those of you the Capricorns who did not know that, now you know. But that was made clear to you and you're making the proper adjustments to still move forward, like giving yourself that... Uh, room to move forward with the things that you have mastered and shielding yourself um, so you can grow in those areas that kind of need to catch up a little bit. And I feel like that's kind of what was you guys undoing in the past. So how I said I sense a little bit of karma. It's like I feel like this is a karmic lesson that's wrapping up for Capricorns where it you needed to go through everything that you've gone through that's led you to this point to get you to see the role that you have played also. If we wanna go a little extra deeper with this, which we always do, if we go to the principle of you attracting what you are, if you are emotionally unavailable, you will then attract people who are emotionally unavailable because you're vibrating at the same frequency. So now that you've recognized that and you're taking the time, effort, and energy and putting that into yourself so that you can heal this facet of yourself. Now you will start attracting people who are emotionally available and thus no longer self-sabotaging. It's been a pleasure doing business with you, Capricorn. I will see you guys in September. I love your faces. Deuces. <laughs>